having a, about a 40 minute presentation done by uh, Resolute Forest Products CEO Richard Garneau. And then we'll be uh, having a, a discussion, a Q&A period. So we will be asking you to participate. Thank you for accepting this invitation and uh, your presence is uh, greatly appreciated. So what I want to do this evening is really to provide the brief overview of uh, the state of the Ontario Forest take a look at the, uh, the province uh, regulatory framework and identify some of the uh, emerging uh, concerns that we have both in respect of the forests and also the industry. So I think that uh, this afternoon I had a chance with the mayor to, uh, to have a look at the, the sawmills. So uh, good progress is being made. Uh, I think it's still cold inside, but I think that uh, certainly uh, next April or next May we're going to have a uh, a good sawmills here. I think that we are at the crossroad in terms of the industry uh, and uh, at the crossroad in terms of the future health of, uh, of our forests and the communities that uh, depend on, on them. We want to talk about jobs again. I know uh, we're very appreciative of the 90 jobs, but I know when you add in the hauling of the wood and, uh, and the tr uh, cutting of the wood, there's more jobs, and it puts the figure about 2.5. So with a mill out of Sapawi, there's 90, roughly 100 jobs. Multiply that by 2.5, so we're looking like 250 jobs. Is that what you would say? Yeah, well, it's it's 100 in the uh, in the sawmills. There are about 75 into uh, the uh, wooden operation. So it's 175, and when you look at all the ends rack, it's uh, 175 times 2.5, so the, the, the impact is close to 400 jobs. So it's jobs that are going to be here, but also in Tunnel Bay or, uh, or, or near Toronto, because the, uh, you know, when you look at lumber that we produce, so some of this lumber is used into truss manufacturing. Some of this lumber is used to, uh, to produce high joists. Some of this lumber is used to, uh, to produce bed frames. So, and I think that it's all, all products that are uh, are also creating uh, economic activities or creating jobs in, uh, in, in different parts of the province. Yes, and I guess that's uh, the second point. On all those challenges you listed there, uh, you know, I think that's an issue for all of us in Northwestern Ontario. Adequoke is certainly going to do its part, but we need to get NOMA and, and FANOM and all the organizations across uh, the north to participate in that because that's, that's scary to see that happening. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Garneau, you mentioned that the industry has been under pressure from, the fiber supply has been under pressure from regulatory changes, uh, protected areas, uh, pressure from NGOs uh, and so on. One of the reactions to that it would seem to me would be uh, to try look, look at uh, increasing utilization of the existing fiber supply or the remaining fiber supply, increases in efficiency. Can you comment on what Resolute's doing on that front? Well, I think that uh, certainly the pilot plants, it's uh, a good indication of what we can do to get or to extract value added from uh, the wood that, uh, that we harvest, the trees that, uh, that we harvest. I think that when you look at the investment that we've made at the sawmills here, it's all new equipment or the equipment that is uh, going to show a better recovery if you compare that to the uh, previous technology or the sawmills that was here in Etikokan, the, uh, the yield or, or the uh, lumber uh, recovery factor is going to be a lot better. So we're going to extract uh, the better the value from the wood. I think that the other example also that I would like to, uh, to, to share with you we had a project uh, last year that uh, came very close to fruition to use the black liquor or the lignin that we extract in the uh, pulp process at uh, Thunder Bay to produce uh, glue, but we were not able to, uh, to put it on the market. So it's all example that uh, really uh, shows that, uh, well, that we're making progress in, in uh, uh, increasing the value of, uh, of the products. I'm particularly concerned about Motion 65 and the withdrawal of 80% of the available biomass or the available forest in, in the boreal forest. Has the, the forest industry uh, talked to any economists to try and estimate what the impact of that is going to be in terms of the cost of wood products? What's it going to mean to the average homeowner in terms of increased cost for their home uh, and other 
forest-based products. How is it going to impact? Because you hit people right in the pocketbook. They understand very quickly. I, I don't think we, as a community or a company, should lose sight of the impact this mill positively will have on the economy, in particular jobs. And uh, several years ago, uh, Gary mentioned in a uh, EDO meeting that um, one created job, one new created job in the community of Atacokan was equivalent to, and Gary, I may be wrong here, a little shy, but 1,200 in the GTA. One lost job, same thing. I don't think we should lose sight of that as a community with Mayor Brown, uh, when you're speaking with the politicians and as we as people. Uh, we're an aging community, we're losing our youth, and uh, you know, we need you and um, we need the mills. So. I'm Gordon Olds, I'm a Community Development Advisor with the Atacokan Economic Development Corporation. I, uh, I find that the uh, boreal forests are integral to the community, um, from forestry to logging, uh, all of the spin-off opportunities, it's incredibly important for it to have a strong, sustainable impact in our community. We don't have enough jobs and enough people to pay for all the amenities that we have, so forestry is very important and it's, in, it's very important that we keep a vibrant forest so that we have the, the wood supply, so the certainty for, for companies like Resolute that are prepared to invest in our, and help our town prosper, so it's been just a great evening.